Hello, how are you? This is Kay. I hope you're having a great day today. So this is uh, 23rd of uh, November on Thursday, and this is a video, not the live stream. But today I would like to share my analysis on gold because gold is now uh, bullish and this is near the major resistance level. And um, I thought this is a good example to share it with you so that um, you know exactly how I analyze market based on Ichimoku five lines and also the candlesticks. So uh, let me now switch screen to trading view and uh, share my analysis. So, um, so here is gold and this is a daily time frame. And um, as you can see, the market has been bullish and um, now this is near the resistance level of 2009.5556 area. So I say this is bullish and that's because of uh, multiple reasons. So let me first tell you the reason from Ichimoku five lines. In terms of Ichim Ichimoku five lines, I can see that the Kumo is first twisted bullish. So in my chart color setting, this um, light gray is bearish Kumo and dark gray is bullish Kumo. So it's bullish Kumo. And then um, in terms of Kumo, there are two lines, which are Senko span A and Senko span B. And the area between Senko span A and B are called Kumo cloud. Um, originally, it wasn't called Kumo, it was called resistance zone. And even before resistance zone, it was called Ami in Japanese, but now it's more common to say Kumo or cloud. So the area again between A and B is called Kumo. And what I look at is the angle of Senko span A now. So Senko span A, angle is now pointing up and that's making the kumo thicker while single span b remains flat and the kumo means that the long term market direction and momentum so whenever i see single span a bullish like this in the bullish kumo this is bullish that means buyers dominant over sellers in terms of the long term and then also now the green line is called the Kijun Sen. And Kijun Sen means the midterm. And Kijun Sen is now pointing up. And the price above the Kijun Sen is also important. So in this case, Kijun Sen is pointing up. So that means it's bullish in the midterm. Okay, and also the blue line is called the Tenkan Sen. Tenkan Sen is a short term. And uh, Tenkan Sen is now flat. The angle of the Tenkan Sen is flat. However, the price is above the Tenkan Sen, so that means it's also bullish. Tenkan Sen doesn't have to be pointed up. It can be flat, but as long as price above the Tenkan Sen, it's bullish. So I say it's bullish momentum in terms of the short term and mid term, and also long term from Kumo, Senko Span A. And plus, the yellow line is called Chikou Span. Chikou Span is lagging. 20, 26 candles to the past from the current candlestick. So that's the Chikou span. And Chikou span location is important. The angle of the Chikou span is not important, but location to price is important. Whenever the Chikou span above the candles, that means it's bullish. Whenever Chikou span below the candlestick, it's bearish. So it's really simple um, line. So Chikou Span is now above the candles. It is almost touching the candlestick, but today, so far, it's bullish because Chikou Span above the candles. So in terms of which five lines, it's bullish. And also in terms of the candlesticks, it's bullish too. So first of all, like I draw this ascending trend line. So yellow trend line, there are two touches and it's bullish. So the market maybe trace to the, to the trend line. However, it may be supported and goes bullish and breaks the resistance. That's one of the scenarios I'm expecting. So that's about the trend line. And also in terms of the candlesticks, if I zoom in like this, then after the date of the 13th of November Monday, I see multiple bullish confirmations in terms of the candlesticks. One is that there was a pin bar breakout 
here on the 16th of November. The previous day, the 15th November was a pin bar where the body is smaller than the wick. And next day, 16th November, it broke bullish. So that's 16th of November means that buyers become dominant than sellers on this date. And for the next two days, 17th November and also 20th November, there was a pin bar too, where again, the body is tiny and long wick up and down. And then um, on two days ago, 21st of November, it broke bullish too. These two pin bars were broken bullish. So whenever I see these pin bar breakout or um, yeah, in this case, pin bar breakout, uh, then I see that they are buyers dominant over sellers. So now it's retracing, it's consolidating for the last two days. And now this structure is called inside bar. In Japanese, it's called harami, but simply it's inside bar means that the high and low of the candlestick on 21st November has been including two candlesticks so far. So it's within the inside of high and low of this candlestick. So that means it's inside bar, harami. And once it breaks bullish, you know, I think there will be a big bar. I think the breakout of 2009.55 is going to be very big because not only the inside bar breakout, but also this one, also the previous resistance inside bar breakout also. So I think the candlestick appears big and I think we can expect some good profits when, it, when that really happens. So again, in terms of the candlesticks, since 13th November, I can see buyers dominant over sellers. In terms of Ichimoku lines, I can also see buyers dominant over sellers. So when I see this kind of thing, confirmations, I'm looking for a buying opportunity before the market breaks the resistance. And this is one of, I think, my unique uh, feature about my strategy is um, I enter trade before the breakout, before the breakout of the inside or, or the, before the breakout of this uh, major resistance level, so that once the breakout happens, I can expect bigger pips. However, I risk only 2% per trade. So even if the market goes retrace, then I only lose very small. So the, in this case, um, in my mind, this is about the risk and the reward ratio in terms of the win rate too. In my mind is that the, um, so I, if I turn trade now, then the chance that the market may be retraced, may be resisted can be possible. So I may be lose, I may be losing smaller, but if the market breaks bullish, I think that will be a great profit. So when I enter trade before the breakout of the major resistance or the inside bar, that means I'm expecting higher reward than risk per trade. However, the win rate may be uh, smaller than um, waiting for the breakout and enter trade. Uh, so uh, this is also, but as long as I can uh, you know, manage the risk management, um, I can still be safe whenever I enter trades, even before or after the breakout. But if you are still not familiar with the risk management, then I always recommend you to wait for the breakout and then enter buy, or wait for the breakout and pull back, then enter buy, so that the bullish trend may continue like this. So, yeah, but if you master the risk management, you know, enter, enter in trades before the breakout, it's possible. And again, I don't mind entering the trade because it's bullish in terms of Ichimoku and also in terms of the candlesticks. If, if I don't see any bullish trend from the, from the Ichimoku especially, then I don't want to be in the trade before the breakout. But this is uh, another case. So I think this is, I thought this is a good example to expect the the breakout. And I say this, but of course, it's not 100%. Um, the market may be resisted and then retrace and or it may 
soon retrace from today tomorrow and it may break the trend line too. In that case, I think the market goes down to the Kijun Sen. Kijun Sen will be flat and then it may go down to Kijun Sen. Then it may be supported by the Kijun Sen and goes bullish. Or it may break the Kijun Sen and goes bearish. So, or uh, the market may be resisted by the resistance level, then retrace down to the trend line and then breaks bullish again. That will be called ascending P wave. The resistances are at the same level, but lows are getting higher and higher. So that's called a, um, um, yeah, like this um, ascending P wave. Ascending P wave means buyers are dominant over sellers near the resistance level. So when I see that structure, I will be more confident to, uh, for the market to break that resistance also. So with this kind of scenarios in mind, I enter trade. So always create the scenarios. If the market goes towards their direction, then what to do? But if the market goes against their direction, what to do? There is not 100% strategy and nothing is 100% in this market and no one can control. So at least we cannot control. We, retail traders cannot control. So it's better to always think about the scenario and plan ahead and so that you know what to do. You don't get panic, and, but you know what to do uh, calmly and objectively when the scenario exactly happens. So um, yeah, so that's gold analysis. And um, I was going to say also about this uh, Tenkan Sen Kijun Sen cross. If you're familiar with the Ichimoku, then you may you may think, and if you're precise on the analysis, then you may have thought already that, but don't you think this is dead cross now? Yeah, so if I zoom in like this, and if you closely look at the Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, yes, it is dead crossing today. But I am still continuing this analysis, and that is because I know Tenkan Sen will be bullish tomorrow. So, and that's because Tenkan Sen is taking the high and low for the last nine candlesticks, right? So that means, um, so let's see, today's here, uh, 23rd of November, and nine candlesticks back from the 23rd of November is going to be uh, here, the 13th of November. Yeah, whenever you count the candlesticks in Ichimoku way, you have to count the most recent today's candlestick as one, not zero, not zero. You have to count this candlestick as one. So every time I use this tool called a uh, date range, you can actually find it here too, date range tool. Then um, whenever I use this one, if I mouse over and left click on today's candlestick, then it becomes zero bar. You see, it becomes zero bar. So if I drag it zero bar to the left, then this becomes eight. But again, this today's candlestick has to be counted as one, not zero. So that's why I always start this drawing, start this, start counting one to the future so that today's candlestick becomes one like this, then go back to nine candles. And that's exactly how Tenkan Sen or Kijun Sen or even Kumo Senko Span AB, even Chikou Span is counted. So Chikou Span is, for example, 26 candles to the, to the past. So Chikou Span is, today's Chikou Span is here. And if I count this candlestick, today's candlestick as one, then if I drag all the way to the left to Chikou Span, then becomes 26. Sometimes I've seen people uh, draw the you know displacement counting this today's candlestick as zero, but it's wrong. So please be careful. So yeah, if you count if you count today's candlestick as one, then uh, Tenkan Sen is taking the high and low. Tenkan Sen is taking this high over here on the twenty first November. This high and the low on the 13th of November. 
Okay, and that's a Tenkan Sen value. So let me just uh, verify, let me clarify based on this uh, analysis. So Tenkan Sen is a blue one, and Tenkan Sen is a mid price, the half price or the mid price of the high and low for the last nine candlesticks. So um, nine candlesticks high is here, and nine candlesticks low is here. Tenkan Sen is the mid price. So if I use the Fibonacci, and if I draw it from top to down, then Tenkan Sen should be 50% of Fibonacci, right? Because this is in the middle. So if I do that right now, from high to low like this, then you see exactly Tenkan Sen is the 50% level. So, yeah, so that's where the Tenkan Sen is. So that means Tenkan Sen is taking nine candlesticks high and low. So that means if tomorrow's candlestick appears, then what's going to happen? If tomorrow's candlestick happens, appears, then Tenkan Sen will take the same high, but the low gets higher because Tenkan Sen then take the low on the 14th of November. So the low gets higher this much. And then as a result, you also know exactly how much Tenkan Sen moves up tomorrow, even if it doesn't break that resistance. Even high doesn't get higher. We know Tenkan Sen will be up this much. So if I draw the Tenkan Sen theoretically, Tomorrow is here. Hold on, let me just uh, delete these ones just to avoid confusion. So, Tenkan Sen will be here. So, Tenkan Sen will look like this tomorrow. So, then let me just delete these ones. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you. So, Tenkan Sen will look like this tomorrow, and that's for sure because low gets higher. For the last twenty, uh, so for the last nine candles, but high remains the same. If it doesn't break that resistance, okay. So that means if Tenkan Sen moves like this, then if I again add the other lines of Ichimoku, then Kijun Sen may remain flat, but Tenkan Sen goes bullish. So there will be gold cross again tomorrow. You see, so. Let's see, Kijun Sen takes high and low for the last nine, last 20, 26, and Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen is taking the high and low from here. So, yeah, Kijun Sen will be flat tomorrow unless it breaks that resistance. So, if Kijun Sen becomes flat, then Kijun Sen will look like this, technically speaking, tomorrow. Yeah. So, the green line is Tenkan Sen, uh, sorry, Kijun Sen, blue is Tenkan Sen. So Kijun Sen will be flat tomorrow. Then Tenkan Sen will be up tomorrow. Then I know this is predictable because this is from the calculation. So tomorrow there will be gold cross of Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen. That's for sure. That's 100% sure. So un unless, unless there will be a big kind of appear and it breaks the support, unless this kind of insane candlestick appears, there will be gold cross of Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen tomorrow. So that means it's bullish still. Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, gold cross above Kumo means bullish. And that's why I'm still, you know, in my mind, this market is still bullish. And also I expect the market breaks that resistance. So that's my example. That's kind of an example of how I plan ahead and I do this in my mind. Sometimes I don't speak up like this detail, but I know that these things are in my mind and analyze markets. So if you master Ichimoku, then you can also predict the angles of the Tenkan Sen Kijun Sen in the future. And also you can look at the candlestick patterns and draw lines, the trend line, resistance lines, and also other lines of Ichimoku. Then you can integrate whole, um, all these uh, you know, information together and expect what may happen in the future. But again, never predict the future. There's nothing that we can predict. So we only create the scenarios based on these analysis. 
then decide what to do in the future. So I thought gold in the daily chart is a good example to explain that, and that's why I did it today. So I think I will finish the video today. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you liked it, please press the like button before you leave. That would be great. And I hope you continue to learn something new from my YouTube channel. And um, I wish to see you again soon. So until then, please stay healthy, stay safe, and stay gold. Okay, bye for now, everyone. Matane. Thank you.